Walk out the tunnel onto an NFL football field. My presentation will bring you right out there, right into the huddle, right into how we're thinking, right into the motivation, right into the success of being an NFL player. The Broncos make the playoffs and people go nuts. I mean, they're painting their horse houses orange. And there's a whole generation of children named John Elway Wilson or John Elway Smith. Or... So the Museum of Natural History decided to take advantage of this uh, insanity about the Broncos and hold a pep rally. The museum called the Broncos, and the Broncos assigned myself and our old running back, a guy named Sammy Winder, to appear at this pep rally. And as I walked in, Sammy and the lady in charge of this thing were heading down to where the pep rally was to be held, and I fell in line with Sammy and, and asked him what was going to happen. And Sammy told me, Carl, here's the deal. First, I'll get up. I'll talk about the offense, then you get up, you talk about the defense, and then this lady here is going to hand us a Seahawk, and we're supposed to tear it up. Well, I figured I could do that. So I got this bird by its legs, and I hold it up to the crowd on this side and say, this is what we're going to do to the Seahawks, and then I, then I run over here and I hold it up to the crowd, and I say, this is what we're going to do to the Seahawks, and then I tear the thing in half. And, Feathers are flying everywhere and stuffing's going to the ground and I, and I throw the half with no head attached to the ground I tear the head off the other half and I throw it out in the crowd and the crowd's going crazy and I'm thinking I love public speaking, this is for me. And then I turned around and saw the lady in charge of the thing. She had her head in her hands. She couldn't believe what I'd just done. You see, that the Seahawk was actually an osprey. And it was part of an ongoing study of the osprey species. And this particular osprey had been collected in 1910. I got hate mail from the Audubon Society. My parents read about it in Washington, D.C. and the USA Today. As, as I'm leaving the museum, they're announcing, whoever caught the head of the Seahawk, please bring it back. You'll get free passes to the IMAX theater. <laughs> so, so that's the courage to try new things, even though they might go terribly wrong. Motivation is a tricky thing. I played 12 years in the NFL, and to be successful out here, you have to be motivated. They don't put your name up in the stadium for no reason. In my programs, we focus on key strategies that help me be successful here in the NFL and in my life. Those same strategies will work in your life too. Whether you're talking about business, family, relationships, keys like teamwork, courage, dedication, desire, honesty and forgiveness, goal setting, things that might seem obvious but I'll explain them to you and give you ways that they help me right here in the NFL. So Bubba comes up to me right before this game and says, Carl, slow down. This is just for fun. Slow down. <laughs> See, to me, dedication is hard work, constant learning, and refusing to quit. If I was on the football field, I was going full speed. No, it didn't matter if it was preseason, regular season, postseason, Super Bowl. There's only one speed. And why not? How am I going to find out what I'm capable of if I'm not going full speed? Now, I know a lot of people think if you just work hard, you're going to be successful. That's not true. I know a lot of people who work hard and who aren't successful. But I don't know anyone who is successful who doesn't work hard. I have the opportunity to speak to uh, to corporate leaders all the time and, and discuss success principles and it's amazing to me how many times someone who owns a really large business and is doing great has come up to me and said you know what Carl this wasn't the plan I was going in a different direction and I saw a problem as an opportunity and I reacted before
no one else did. And now I've got this big company built around that one thing that I saw as an opportunity and everyone else saw as a problem. So how do you be decisive? How do you prepare yourself to be decisive? First, you have to be able to anticipate the problems that are coming. And to do that, in football, we practiced. And we practiced hard. And we watched film, and we were ready, and we, we studied our opponents. Well, you can anticipate things that are coming in your life, too. I believe in six keys to success. You know what? Talent isn't one of them. I believe that God has given each of us more talent than we can possibly use. But along with that, He's given us free will. What that means is it's up to us to go out, to try new things, to have the courage to do that, even though we might fail, and then work on those skills, work on those talents, and develop them. Carl Mecklenburg speaks to corporations, associations, and leadership groups across the country. He presents inspiring lessons. Life in the NFL taught him about teamwork, courage, dedication, desire, goal setting, honesty, and forgiveness. Lessons that can be applied anywhere. Carl was very gracious. He came out to our community to learn more about our organization and then he tailored his um, comments tonight to our organization, really embraced our mission and that really meant a lot to us. But you can't test for Alzheimer's now. You can't give somebody a pill or give them a DNA test yet. But it's there. It's out there somewhere. And if we continue to work and we continue to team up and we continue to donate and do the things we have to do as members of the team, we're going to solve this thing. Teamwork is an obvious thing in sports. I mean, you can look at, at the Broncos. I played on some great Bronco teams through the years. I got my, my Super Bowl rings and stuff. It's great. But, man, those were good years. Three Super Bowls, three A AFC championships I played in. Uh, and I love going to work. Those, were, those days were wonderful. I mean, we got along. The, the old guys got along with the young guys. The black guys got along with the white guys. The, the coaches got along with the players. I mean, it was fun to go to work. I also played on some bad Bronco teams. My last year there, 1994, I think we were 7-9. and nine. It was Wade Phillips last year. We had a, uh, a group of people standing by, behind our bench at every home game chanting, Wade must go, Wade must go. I mean, it, it was hard to go to work, too. The linemen didn't get along with the, with the backs. The front office didn't get along with anybody. The rich guys didn't get along with the richer guys. <laughs> I like that one, too. <laughs> but it was hard to go to work. And the funny thing was there wasn't that big of a difference between one team and the other. I mean, a, a team is like a teeter-totter, a seesaw. On one side, you have a small group of people that are the leaders. They think long term. They think we instead of me. And they put that team mission, that team passion first. On the other side, you've got the egos. The egos are thinking short term, it's all about me, where's my money? And then in the middle, you've got the rest of the team, and that's usually the largest group. And by adding or subtracting a leader or an ego, you can tip that teeter totter one way or the other. You've got momentum towards success, or you've got momentum.